Welcome to Smart Finance 360, the podcast where money matters meet innovative thinking. Every week, we dive deep into the world of finance, exploring trends, debunking myths, and bringing you the latest insights from industry experts. Whether you're a seasoned investor, a financial newbie, or somewhere in between, this is your go-to source for becoming financially savvy. All right, welcome to another podcast of Smart Finance 360, your mortgage and more. I'm really excited today because I have Amr Bali here. He's one of the top real estate and mortgage coaches in Michigan, and he works with everyone throughout the United States, and he's just does a really, really good job. He was the number one broker in mortgages in Michigan back in 2021, and he's closed thousands of loans, so he now helps a lot of loan officers, helps a lot of real estate agents. He also helps a lot of business, just in general, entrepreneurs, how to make money and how to improve on their life. So, Mir, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, Kyle, it's my privilege. You, Kyle, of all people, have been a brother to me. You've just you've been my mentor at times. It's funny you say you look up to me, but I actually look up to you. So it's crazy how it's crazy because <laughs> it's crazy. You were definitely my mentor. So <laughs> no, but uh, I appreciate you for having me here. Thanks for the introduction. Um, and it means a lot. You have a, an incredible team of what you're building here. I know I told you this before, but what you're building here is ins- it's, it's, it's insane. Because when I first met you, it was you, Jimmy, and I think maybe Adam working out of that co-working space. <laughs> yeah. You remember that co-working with an yep. open roof? And, yep. And it was we, were, we used to think in Michigan, like, wow, this is a crazy office. But you guys were in a co-working space. And now I look around and I say, this podcast room, the green screen, Bailey, JC, the team, you're absolutely crushing it, Kyle. So uh, I you should be proud of yourself. I, I really am. And all the hard work is starting to pay off. And it's really fun to see. And now I get the energy of having people around me all day. We got a huge team. And when you have people you like working with and people that, you know, feed off each other's energy, there's nothing like it. Mm. Like it's something that I always, you know, I've always worked on small teams <laughs> and I've always worked in areas where maybe we didn't have a growth mindset, but the growth mindset here, plus being able to feed off the energy of others wanting to get better every day. It's unmatched. It's just fun oh, yeah. to work and get up every single day and do things that you want to do. And so it's fun to help the people that have to do things that they have to do, but it's fun to, you know, be able to build what I'm building. So I really appreciate that. So. Yeah, you're, you're really owning that. And I was just sitting in your meeting and you, you, you have a very good way of getting everybody involved with the awards and the, the coaching and your beliefs and the, the, the branch beliefs. It's just insane. It's it's very very cool. It's been fun. It kind of it dawned it, it dawned on me. This was about six months ago, and I, I really like that. You mortgage in general has core values. That's the company I work at, but uh, they have their core values. But I'm like, well, what about the boots on the ground branches? Why don't we have our own kind of system of how we do things? And so, what we decided to do is we decided to have not only our own vision, but each vision has bullet points. But what we want to perfect, and then we just focus on those ten to maybe fifteen different bullet points of characteristics. Mm-hmm. That we can apply every day. So what that did for me as a leader is it just essentially made this amazing curriculum for my loan officers and my employees to follow, to live by, to improve by. And now we have endless amount of mm-hmm. trainings, endless amount of things we can talk about and focus on and improve on. And it's really starting to become a part of these people. And it's fun. You can see the people that it's a part of them. You can see the difference. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because they're, they're more bought in. You had so many people here that are like, they're they're repping U Mortgage West so hard. They don't rep you, even though U Mortgage is a phenomenal company. They're repping West. They're repping Kyle. They're repping Jimmy. They're repping Adam. They got the boots on the ground leaders. So I mean, it's important to to for scalability pieces. Like, what would Anthony Costa do? Yeah, right? we are embody that, mm-hmm. so we can be boots on the ground, and that's how you scale. That's when the other branch managers are catching on. Of like, oh, well, what is Kyle doing? I'm just doing what Anthony would do if he was here. Oh yeah, so he has to replicate himself. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not trying to do that. So enough about me though. It's about you. <laughs> Tell me about your 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 history. Your history is crazy mm-hmm. of just a childhood. Tell me a little bit about you. Yeah, so um, thank you for asking. So I started uh, I started my journey in life. My I was born. Uh, my father was never around. So unfortunately, you know, I missed a I missed a big part of my life where my father wasn't around. Growing up, I always used that as like a sob story. I always thought that was like a crutch in my life. I was like, oh, I never had a dad, you know. Um, but I learned so much from it and, you know, we'll talk about it in that in a sec. So my mom, she raised me for, my mom was a, she was a big pillar in my life, but then, uh, eventually over time, my mom, she had me raised by my grandparents. I was going into foster care. My grandparents took me in and I lived with my grandparents my entire life. My grandparents were with me my entire life, uh, from the age of 13 till even now, uh, my grandmother and my grandfather and me I have no siblings. My grandfather was somebody in my life that I looked up to because he took me in as his son and I wasn't his son, but he took me in and he raised me my entire life. 
when I turned 18, I changed my name legally to Amr Fuad Bali because Fuad is my grandfather's name. So now if you look at my driver's license, Fuad is on my driver's license. And I remember on my 18th birthday, I walked up to him and I showed him my driver's license or my temporary one at the time. <clears throat> and I said, Bob, I said, because you raised me my whole life, I said, and I wasn't able to do this before. I said, I wanted to give you my name. I wanted to carry your name. So uh, it was incredible. We, we didn't have the best life. Just like anybody else's story, right? Everybody else's growing up or come up was difficult, right? We didn't have the most money. They, my grandparents were foreigners. They came here from Iraq. Uh, my grandfather worked for Wonder Bread and he retired from Wonder Bread. At one point, we had 13 people in our house. It was the best. You know, some people, when they tell their story, they talk about how there are so many people living in their home and they almost make it seem as if it was like a horrific experience. Um, in my case, I, I lived in a room with my grandfather, my mattress was on the floor and it was the best thing ever. Because I remember the days I would come home late, my grandfather would rock my world. He would ruin me, right? But the days where I was doing good, my grandfather, I remember there were times in my life where my grandfather would pick me up from middle school and he'd rub my head, you know, and he'd be like, you're doing a great job. And, and those are times in my life, I'll never forget those. Although he's still alive, he's getting old, but I had that, you know, and I wasn't able to have that grandfather or that father or bring your parents to school day, right? I didn't have that. Or I didn't have that father that was able to take me to a baseball game or someone that was able to show me how to talk to a woman or someone who was going to show me how to handle my finances. I didn't have that. Over time in my life, I had to learn how to do all that on my own. When I was 18 years old, um, I was living a, I wasn't living a good life. I wasn't living a life of a man who was God-fearing by no means. Um, whether it was gambling, whether it was stealing, whether it was doing drugs or whether it was drinking or whether it was uh, looking for women and not caring about women, using, and just looking at them as a body, as somebody that I can find pleasure from rather than loving them and caring for them as my sisters. I wasn't living a godly life by no means. So I had to come to a point in my life where I really had to find God. Uh, when I was 19 years old, I went on this retreat called Two Foundations. It changed my life. It was a four-day all-boys retreat. They lock you in a room for four days, take your phone away from you, and they talk to you about God. And they talk to you about how um, he is a figure in your life or God or Jesus or whatever. He's not somebody that you need to fear. Rather, he's your friend. And um, he's somebody, his moral compass is something you should empower, you should ingrain in your own life. It was great. Throughout my entire life, when it comes to my career, uh, I worked at a large mortgage company with 18 years old. I worked at a credit union. I owned my own phone stores, failed completely. Um, I worked at uh, United Wholesale Mortgage. And then uh, September of 2018, um, I decided to quit my job at UWM and I decided to start my own branch at a mortgage company um, and it was called The Valley Team. I didn't close my first loan until January of 2019. I remember when I started The Valley Team it was very, very difficult in the beginning. I wasn't closing any loans. I had no money. I actually had no money um, to the people that are listening. I want, you, I want you to put yourselves in the position of understanding that I had no mom. I had no dad. My grandparents were living off their pension, pension and social security. If I couldn't make my car payment, nobody was going to make it for me meaning they, I was going to lose my car. It was very difficult. It was very difficult. The stress of saying, okay, I have to make payments um, for my bills. Although I also have to run a company, I have to run a team. Although I didn't have a team, but I have overhead of my tech or my marketing or whatever it was. So I remember I was picking up jobs at liquor stores at night. And my Fridays consisted of 3, 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. And to anybody that's listening to this, if you know how liquor stores are ran, especially in Michigan, they're open for good damn near all day. But 3 p.m. to 2 a.m., and then I remember Saturday was 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. So it was like, that was a really long shift. It was almost 18 hour shift. And then Sunday, it was 11 p.m. to 7 p.m. Or 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I remember those days when I was making the fried chicken in the liquor store. And I was saying to myself, this is the effing worst. This, like, I said, this has to pay off. And to anybody listening as well, and to you guys that know, it's Bailey. Bailey's not on the camera, but he's the superstar that's running the show. But uh, to those of you that know, you know, when you're doing something in your life, when your back is up against the wall, you have two options. And the options are, I'm either going to win or I'm going to die. Like there's no other, there's no, uh, oh, I'm not going to win, I'm going to lose and I'm just going to go pick up a regular job. So no, you put your heart and soul into this. You're either going to win or it's like, I'm going to die because I'm going to win. I know I'm not going to die, so I'm going to win. There's no other choice. Uh, so I did mortgages. Um, I busted my butt. I, I worked really hard. And I know a lot of other people in this world work very, very hard as well. I worked very hard um, and I slowly climbed the ranks and I became one of the top mortgage brokers in the country. Um, it was incredible. Uh, in 2022, my career took a, a very large shift. Uh, things didn't really go out and work the way I wanted. Um, unfortunately, I, I lost some things. And when I talk about I lost some things, 
I don't say I lost things due to, oh, I blame this person or I blame that person or I blame this circumstance. I look back and say things in my career didn't go the way I wanted because I didn't do things correctly. And when I say I didn't do things correctly, that means maybe I was a prick to the wrong people. Maybe I was arrogant. Maybe I lost my moral compass because I started putting money above people. Right? Maybe I thought I was untouchable because I had money or because I was number one. And I look at it and I say, God, he really, really humbled me. He picked me up by the hips and he said, Amir, sit the hell down. Like, I'm going to sit you down. He's like, you, you need to, he's like, you, you, I gave you everything and I'm going to sit you down. It's a quote by Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson says, Mike Tyson. the man, Mike Tyson says, um, Mike Tyson says, the worst thing that can happen to you is you get everything you ever wanted. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. And I remember I was January of 20 or no, December, November of 2021. I remember I said, I made $2 million this year. I said, I got so much money. I don't even know. I, I said, I came up poor. Four years, I got $3 million in my bank account. I said, I got all this money. I said, I can buy anything I want. And I remember saying to myself, I said, I'm untouchable. I remember saying, I said, I'm untouchable. And it's crazy because that next year was the toughest year of my life. It was the, I lost everything. I lost, I literally lost everything. Looking at my bank account, 20 grand in my bank account. I just had a couple million dollars in here a year ago, 20 grand in my bank account. He humbled me. I had to take that. I had to take that humble or that 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 trouble that I went through. And I had to say, I have two options. I can say one, I can say, woe goes me. And I can say, uh, I'm going to blame everybody else for my problems and I'm not going to take a countership and ownership. Or I can say, I'm going to flip this misfortune and make it fortune. I'm going to flip the struggles that I'm going through and I'm going to make it a fortune. And what I did was um, I started a coaching company. I started a consulting company. And I also started doing a lot of real estate investing uh, with my coaching company, um, with Be All. And I know I'm talking a lot, Kyle. So oh, it's I, phenomenal. I'm not going to talk at all. So there you go. With, with, with Be All, um, I have the opportunity of coaching. And right now, I've, I've, or I've coached over the, the time of Be All, I've coached over 1,000 loan officers now, over 1,000 real estate agents that have actually paid me money to coach them. And it's different when someone's paying you to coach them because I'll coach you, Kyle, because you're my brother all day. I don't care. But when you say, Amir, I'm going to pay you for this. It's like, this freaking guy really is invested in me because you're actually going to take money out of your pocket and you're going to give it to me just to talk to you, right? Just to give you homework, just to give you a, a call to action. Um, I work with loan officers all across the country. And what I teach these loan officers is not just how to talk to a real estate agent. What I teach these loan officers is not only how to post on social media. What I teach these loan officers is not what time to wake up in the morning. What I teach these loan officers is how to actually take uh, the misfortune you've had in your life and make it a fortune. How to take the, the sorrow and the stress and the nights you were crying and the nights you felt like you were alone and the nights like you felt like you had nobody and take that and use it as motivation to push yourself forward. I did this training just now. For, I had the privilege of doing this training for your LOs just now. And one of your LOs came up to me and he said, Amir, he said, that whole entire training, he said, you were talking shit to me in the nicest way possible. And I said, that's exactly how it should be. I said, that's ex-. He said, I'm going to, I said to him, I said, I'm going to talk so much smack to you, but I'm going to do it with a smile on my face. Because if I'm just talking smack to you, it's demeaning. But if I'm talking smack to you with a smile on my face, it means I care. I care about you. So with the coaching, um, it all falls down to one core value, and that's just belief. No matter how bad you think you're doing in your business, I believe in you. I was just uh, at lunch with a real estate agent, and she said, I'm not closing any business. And I responded to her, I said, but I believe in you. I know you can do it. I say, you just got to do X, Y, Z. So that's what I'm doing now. The real estate investing side, um, I started buying a lot. I, I entered into a new realm of something that I have no idea what it is. And so I've been buying and selling a lot of property in Michigan. And I started doing that because I recognize that there's a profit in it. Buying these homes, these foreclosed, distressed homes, renovating them and selling them with phenomenal profit margins. But I did that not because of, of course, there's a profit, it's incredible. But I tell the clients I do coaching for, I say, the reason why I do this now is because I want to show you that I'm telling you to do things every single day that you don't know and you're not comfortable doing and you're going to find success doing it. And now I'm doing real estate investing and I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. I meet these investors and I buy these homes and I don't know what I'm getting into, but I'm doing something new as well. So if I'm going to teach you to do something new, I got to do something new too. Right? So they go hand in hand. So that is rad. I mean, that's a lot to unpack. Yeah. yeah. As far as what a journey. I think uh, I think the word 
there's two words, but the first word I would say is perseverance mm-hmm. is unreal for me mm-hmm. as far as, and grit. Mm-hmm. Those are two words. I think for you, you got grit, mm-hmm. my man. I mean, from being basically, you were an orphan and then you have all these ups and downs in your life. You've had that absolute high, absolute low, mm-hmm. and now you're back up mm-hmm. there on the absolute high. Yeah. How do you keep, so I, What's the question I can even ask here? Because I've I've only been kind of I've been up and down as well, but not like that much. How do you keep your head on straight during those times now? Now you you understand how it it feels at the top. You also understand how it feels at the bottom. Mm-hmm. How do you feel this time around being on the top again? Yeah. So to answer that, I'm just going to say something before I answer that. In 2022, um, everything was going incredible. It was going great, great, great. Uh, June of 2022, I got married. It was, a, it was an amazing. I got married to my best friend. And you were a huge piece of what ended up happening. But um, in June, and I don't know if Bailey even knows the story, but in June of 2022, I got married, came back from my honeymoon. And two days after I came back from my honeymoon, my wife was my wife was dead. My wife was dead on the floor. I remember walking out of the shower. My wife had a cardiac arrest. And she saw the camera footage you showed me. Yeah, and she was running in there. And she wasn't, and my wife wasn't alive when I walked out of the, when I walked out of the shower, my wife was dead. Like, that's it. Like, she had no heartbeat. So, so... She had no heartbeat. She was dead. I remember I got on my knees and I started giving her CPR. And I, and, and I, I said to myself, what the hell is going on? Right now? Like, what's going? My wife is a nurse. My wife doesn't smoke. She doesn't drink. She doesn't eat bad food. She's the person I've ever healthiest person I've ever met. And she had a cardiac arrest. And I'm giving her CPR. I'm giving her CPR. I called the police. The police came. And I remember we get to the hospital and the doctor says to me, 15 minutes into me being in the hospital, I see the doctor walk out. I stand up. I look at the doctor. I say, doc, I'm a strong man. Tell me what happened. I said, there's nothing you can tell me that's going to break me. Tell me what happened. He goes, your wife has a 10% chance to survive. And I remember I looked at him. I said, 10% chance. To survive. I said, I just kissed her this morning. What do you mean 10% chance to survive? Your wife had a cardiac arrest. Her heart stopped. We don't know what happened. She's, on the, she's in the ICU. She's on a ventilator. She's on life support. Doc, what do you mean? She's on life. I remember I was cussing him out. I said, what the f- do you mean? She's on life support. I said, she was just fine this morning. We don't know. We're going to keep her on life support for seven days. If she doesn't come back, she's dead. We're going to pronounce her dead. I remember one of my biggest worries, aside from my wife, obviously, was work. And you flew out the next day. That next day, you left your your beautiful children, your beautiful wife, your beautiful company, and you left to come support my team, which was, at the time, was one of the biggest things anybody ever did for me. And you didn't even question coming out. You came out, and you were there for me. And it's something I will never forget. And um, and I rem- and. Six days went by. She was on the ICU, and she slowly came back to life. I thought we, it was at the point to where we were going to start booking the, the burial, the mass. We were going to start doing everything because we we thought she wasn't going to come back to life. She ended up coming back to life by the glory of God. Month later, I had to leave mortgages. Month later, I lose my first child. My wife had a miscarriage. Month later, I'm only in November right now. Month later, I lose my my, my second child, and I remember it was December 28th of 2022. I remember sitting in front of sitting in front of the cross at church and I was on my knees and I was looking at God. I was looking at the cross and I said, I'm at the worst point of my life. I said, I'm overweight. I said, I, I said, my, my wife almost died. I can't have children. I said, I'm struggling to make ends meet. I said, what the hell happened? What happened? Just a year ago, I closed 128 loans in a month. What just happened? When I said that to God, when I said that, I remember January 1st came back. January 1st came, came just a few days later. I remember I said, I have to make a change in my life. I said exactly where I was, October 4th of 2018, where I said, I'm either going to win or I'm going to die. I have to re-implement that all over again. And I did it all over again. And I didn't do it alone. I had support of other people around me, but it was all about, it was all about, I'm going to come back into the industry and I'm not just going to take what's mine, but I'm going to bring other people along for the journey. It doesn't, if I win, that doesn't mean you have to lose. We can both win together. So how can I change the community? How can I change the culture? And say, yeah, I'm not the most perfect person in the world. By no means. I know I'm not perfect. But if I can help you become great, then you're going to say, you know what? That guy, Amir, really isn't so bad after all. And then you're going to become my fan. And then we work together and we grow together. That's just what it's all about. Just not stopping. Not stopping. Yeah, I love that. I think that is a, a, a true American story right here. I think that's a movie story, honestly. You're going to be in a movie someday. Um, Lifetime. I can't wait to be at the uh, 
at the premiere because that is just unbelievable. I mean, just the stuff that you've been through. I think what I love about you, Amr, is that you've been through all this horrific, horrific stuff. And instead of just saying, yet, world sucks, I'm done, I don't give a crap, and just wallow in pity, you, you did it. You won. You didn't die. You won. But what you did is instead of just winning and rubbing in everyone's faces, you decided to switch this, switch all you've done in the past when you were winning to now helping others, empowering others. And so that's what you do at Be All Coaching. And that's why I love that you've, you know, you're you're one that have had worse experience probably than most people ever. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. But what you've done now and the impact you have on others, it's so inspiring. And that's why you're my mentor. That's why I look up to you. That's why I'm so thrilled that you're here. You flew out here um, to Utah and uh, I look up to you a lot. But uh, tell us a little bit about your focus on Be All Coaching um, with, you know, obviously your background's incredible, so you can help these people. But uh, yeah. the last segment I want to talk about with Be All Coaching, what uh, what's kind of some of your focus to help these entrepreneurs? Okay. That's a great question. So thank you. So um, with the Be All side of things, uh, I mainly focus on coaching loan officers. Loan officers are the, the biggest one I coach. And the reason why I focus on coaching loan officers is because I was a loan officer. I was great at being a loan officer. So I can teach that. I slowly started dissecting into coaching real estate agents. And the only reason why I feel comfortable coaching real estate agents, although I never was a realtor, is because I've spent so much time on not being a better LO, but being a better realtor so that I can speak the language of a real estate agent. That's why I feel comfortable with that. I was coaching um, who was like, oh, I was coaching a car salesman one time on how to sell more cars. And I was like, I was like, before you pay me, I just want you to know that I've never sold a car before. <laughs> like I told yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I said, I don't know what I can actually. He's like, you're gonna teach me how to market, you're gonna teach me how to talk to people. I said, okay, cool. So I said, as long as you recognize that. With be all and how it works is there is no set price. You call me for coaching. Uh, there is no price. I think when you, you, uh, you paid me a couple times and, yeah. and you said, Amir, how much I owe you? I said, there's no price. It's whatever you feel comfortable paying. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because if I work with 20 people and they pay me 500 bucks a month, that's 10 grand a month. I do you, I'm not discrediting 10 grand a month. Cause that's a lot of money. It's hundred grand a year, 120 grand a year, but I was making 300 grand a month. Right. So like, $500 a month from one person is not going to make me rich. It just won't. It's not going to put me in Park City, right? It's not going to put me in Park City. It's not going to put me there. But but what I will tell you is if $500 a month is a lot to, for example, someone like Bailey, if Bailey needs coaching and Bailey only has $2,000 in his bank account and Bailey says, you know what? I'm going to give him here $500. That's 25% of his savings. He's now bought in. But if I say to him, Bailey, only give me $1,000. He can't, he actually can't afford that, for example, obviously. He actually can't afford that, right? So he's just not going to do the coaching altogether. So when I talk to people that want coaching, I say, you pay me what you can afford, but you feel it coming out of your account. What can you afford monthly, but you feel it coming out? Or it's not 20 bucks, because yeah. 20 bucks is 20 bucks, but it's like, you know what? It's 500 bucks. I'm going to feel that. It's just enough, because once you feel it, you're invested. You're bought in. You're, you're yeah. giving me skin. You're, you have skin in the game. So it's like now you're bought in I like that because if you only give me twenty bucks, you're gonna say f this guy. Yeah, I'll miss the appointment. I don't care because you don't even care. It's only twenty bucks. But if you give me a thousand dollars, you're just not gonna do it now. Yeah. So it's I'm not doing the coaching to get rich. I'm doing the coaching because if I can help twenty people find crazy amounts of success, that's twenty people in the world that are gonna say this guy Amir Bali is the real deal. And then what am I gonna do with those twenty people in the future? Who knows? Yeah. But the audience that I'm able to create. I'm, of course, going to leverage it one way or another in the future. Who knows where my career is going to take me? But be all right now, its primary focus is to help people become successful. That's all it is. It's not to make me rich because it's not. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not making me rich. I love it, though, <laughs> but it's something that you're really good at. And, you know, it makes you very successful. And it's something that a lot of success stories have come out of. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen loan officers and real estate agents double than what they did before. I've seen I follow you. I see it. How can people get a hold of you? That's a great question. So all my social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, it's just my name, Amir Bally. Um, my phone number um, or my email address, my email is just Amir, my first name, at B all, B-E-A-L-L-C-C.com, B all coaching and consulting.com. Uh, my phone number, you can text me, but mainly my social media. On all my social media platforms, you will see my phone number, you will see my email. Uh, my phone, I give my cell phone number to everybody. It's funny, I was doing the coaching, the training yesterday for the girls, the real estate girls. She's like, I know I probably can't have your number. I said, why can't you have my number? I said, please take my number. Call me whatever you need, you know? And uh, so if you guys, if anybody ever needs anything, you please reach out. Um, and I am a resource to anybody, to anybody and everybody. And you don't have to pay me for me to be your resource. So that's please it. reach out. Last thing, and you get to do this call. What's yeah. the call to action? 
So the call to action is get what's yours. Um, there's a lot of people in this world these days where they're very, very open to blaming other people for their problems. Uh, and I always like to use the example of you're the coach. So I used to do, uh, I used to have a loan officer. He used to work for me and he coached a high school basket or uh, elementary school basketball team. And I used to always use the example of when him and his little kids, they all walk out into the basketball court. If they're versing a team that looks like a bunch of middle schoolers, is the coach going to look at his team and say, yeah, we're not going to win this game today, right? And if he says that to them, what's going to happen? They're not going to win the game. In times of adversity, even when you believe you're going to fail, or even when you believe you're going to lose, or even when you believe that you're not skilled enough, trained enough, or properly educated enough to win, you have to go out there and do it to the best of your abilities. The only person that you're failing when you fail is yourself. If you decide to not wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 in the morning for the next month, you didn't fail me. You didn't fail your team. You're failing you. Right? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you only have yourself. You're the coach, Kyle. You're the coach of you, of your wife, of your beautiful children. You're the coach of that. And you control that. You have to give what's yours for them. Right? Some of these people, they don't have, they're not married. They don't have any kids. They're getting what's theirs for them. But I can tell you, to anybody listening to this, it is so much fun to be financially free when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s. It is so much fun to be financially free than keeping up with the Joneses, than doing the ones and twosies. But busting your ass for a year, just one strong year, and you find a bunch of success, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. It's the best feeling in the world. Love it. Mic drop. I love you. Yeah, I Great podcast. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Kyle, thank you for having me. Um, it's, I, I know I've said it in the beginning, but I got to say it again. It is an absolute honor to be here. And I'm not just saying because we're being recorded, we're on a podcast. Uh, you are a friend. You are a brother. Uh, seeing what you, what Jimmy, what Adam, what the other branch managers, what you guys have built here, this is a dream. Just letting you know, if I was, if I was sitting in that chair, it would be a dream. And I am so freaking proud of you, Kyle. So great job, bro. Appreciate you, man. We're going to get you on again. I love you, man. Thank you. Love you too.